Hey there, fight friends. Uh, really great interview today. We've got Adam Maverick Asenza on the line with us. He's fighting at BTC this weekend against Polo Reyes. Adam, thanks for speaking with us. No problem. Thanks for having me on. It's fight week. Tell me what fight week is like for you, because every fighter goes through a different process. It's currently Tuesday, fights uh, on the weekend. Are you, when you do your mental preparations, you're such a veteran. Is there really much of a mental preparation anymore, or is it just another day at the office for you? Well, I, you know, for me, I feel as though, you know, you need to do your mental preparation every day. So it's just another day at the office for me. You know, everything's the same, just eating a lot less food, drinking a lot more water for the first few days. Mm -hmm. So I, before I did this interview, I went on to your topology, topology and I just double checked to make sure I'm, I'm current on everything. And I was surprised to see that you, your three most recent announced bouts, they were all canceled. And I find that seems to be happening more and more these days that fights drop for whatever reason. Does that ever get frustrating as a fighter when you go through what's presumably the start of a training camp at least, and then for whatever reason, whether you're hurt or the other guy's hurt or the whole event's canceled, that the fight doesn't happen? I mean, in the fight business, this is common, right? This happens all the time. The The issue with the last three fights that is, I guess, most annoying would be that they all dropped out at the weigh-ins or after the weigh-ins. Oh. That was the crazy thing. So you go through the whole you know, fight camp, and then you go through the weight cut, and then you make weight. And then, you know, one guy was like the day of, he didn't get on the plane. Another guy, um, we both weighed in and then like he, he didn't get cleared for medical clearance because he had like a metal plate on his shin. Like that's illegal to fight with or something like that. Like he didn't have a rod. He, he actually got a plate wherever he was from. And then the one guy, unfortunately, the night bef the night of, like the night before weigh-ins, I guess, uh, I guess his mother had passed away from what I hear. So oh, obviously wow. he had to leave and, you know, we tried to make another fight happen. Uh, for the LFA and just, you know, didn't work out that way. So, I mean, you know, I, I get it. Like, you know, fights get canceled all the time, but to have three in a row at the weigh is kind of ridiculous. Is that demoralizing? I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, I mean, things happen and you just got to keep it moving, you know? Sometimes life, you know, throws you curveballs and, you know, that's just part of it, right? So, you know, we just keep it moving and it's annoying for sure. But I mean, you know, the next day we're we're right back on to making plans to see what what's next, right? I can't speak to the particulars of your your three previous opponents and, and their circumstances, especially the man if his, if his mother did die, that's absolutely terrible and understandable. But I, I see it so often these days that fights just fall through, especially in the late stages like yours. Do you think there should be some kind of penalty system for fighters that that make because you're a professional fighter, this is how you earn your living, and you have goals and aspirations that rely upon you getting fights and winning fights. So when you put in so much time and effort in preparing and getting ready and showing up and doing everything you need to do and the fight doesn't happen, do you think it's fair that these guys just go on and some of them and, you know, they do the same thing over and over? Andy, I've dealt with this my entire career. You know, mm -hmm. since like my, my second pro fight, third pro fight, I'd have four or five guys pull out. And, you know, promoters always say I'm a nightmare, whether I'm fighting in the States or I'm fighting in Canada. So I don't know. Like, I mean, that would be great, I'm sure that there has to be maybe some legitimacy or maybe a penalty, but like, I don't understand how you could enforce that because you are fighting. So you do mm -hmm. get hurt very easily. I don't know. I've dealt with this my entire career, like all my yeah. fights, even, even recent fights, even for other organizations in the States, they go through four or five guys and they're all, they're all killers. It's just a matter of, I, I don't know. Like some, some of this bad luck. I don't, I don't really know what to say. Well, we're now four days away from this next scheduled bout. Does it, Sit in the back of your mind at all that, you know, it might become number four. This guy doesn't pull out or you just can't think about that. And I'm sorry for bringing it up if it's a, if it's a touchy issue. No, you know, I mean, you got to get through this stuff. You got to get over it. You know, if life happens. What are you going to do? Are you going to cry about it or are you going to keep it moving? And that's yeah. keep it moving no matter what. So. Well, this guy this weekend is named Paul Reyes, a Mexican fighter. He's coming up. He's got a, a decent record. Tell me what you know about him and what your preparations were for this guy. Yeah, he's a tough guy, complete fighter. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking to do what I do every fight. You know, I look to dominate. I look to, you know, have a beautiful performance. And when I'm doing that, uh, you know, it, it you, you see what you see with my product. You know, it's a, an exciting fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's always a good time. You, you are an exciting fighter. And I've had the privilege of watching you train a whole bunch of times as well. And you have a, a certain intensity when you're on the mats. I mean... People might not know, but when you're training with training partners, I mean, you're you're not trying to kill them, of course, because they're your friends and teammates, and they're they're there for you. But still, you have a 
certain focus when you're training that's very apparent. And it, that transfers to the fight game as well. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, I had the privilege also of being at your last fight. It was at LFA against Junior Mello. Now, that fight didn't go your way. You did lose that fight. But um, when people just look at the record, that doesn't, or the, the outcome, that doesn't tell the whole story because for two and a half rounds or probably two point like seven rounds, you were, I think if I said you were smashing the guy, I'd be pretty accurate. You were really beating him up and just, uh, you know, the tides turned in an instant. How important is it for you to uh, address that in your preparations and, and, you know, make sure that it's not a hurdle that you have to get past, or is it just something that you embrace and for what it is? Yeah, you got to embrace it for what it is because, I mean, you know, I was dominating like I usually do. And, you know, I don't know if you know the backstory about it. You know, I'm not going to make any excuses, but I did get poked in the eye. So I was trying mm -hmm. to recover from that. I wasn't necessarily hurt, you know. And, I, you know, mm -hmm. I was intelligently defending myself. I had my hands up. I was keeping them at my, my, length, my, my leg length range. And I, I don't know, I felt like it was a bit of an early stoppage. Um, I popped up the second that, you know, the yeah. left pulled him off. Yeah. I mean, it could kind of kind of one of those crappy things that, that, that happened. You know what I mean? I mean, it's hard to fully recover when, you know, you can't really see too good. So, you know, I was just trying to hang in there and, and you know, get the guy to the, hopefully hoping the guy would come to the ground so I could hold on to him. And it just, I thought it got stopped early. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. That's in the past and we keep moving forward. You know, I mean, I can't say enough about, you know, when things don't go your way, the quickest way to any route or to any destination is a straight line. So you can, mm -hmm. you can you go squiggly and start worrying about what happened, what you should have done. This sucks. That sucks. Or you could just keep moving forward. And so that's what yeah. I choose to do every time. Right. Yeah. That's a great attitude to have because the, the fight game is so unpredictable. It's not like an office job where you go and you know that you're going to be sitting behind a computer for 40 hours a week, especially when you're a fighter, there's ups and downs. And, and sometimes there's more of ups and sometimes there's more downs and you have to be able to, to persevere through all of it. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you can only control what how you feel and what you do, right? So mm -hmm. that's what I try to do. And, you know, the rest is the rest is just it goes the way it goes. Just listen to the way you're addressing all the, these questions I have and the way you're talking about them. Do you have any kind of uh, like any mental conditioning coach? Because I know some fighters are really embracing that right now. I definitely have a, a background in psychology a little bit. And I also have some good buddies who are psychologists who I've had the pleasure of knowing them for, you know, 10 plus years. So I, I definitely have some training in that. Do you have any advice to younger fighters coming up as if, is this something they should also be doing like right from the get go? Or is this something more like, you know, when you get to more advanced stage in your career where you're, where you're doing well and you're facing bigger name fighters? Um, you know, at the end of the day, the mental portion is always the most important portion. In my opinion, you could be a B level fighter, you know, with, with, you know, moderate skills. And uh, if your mental game's on point, you can go very far that way. So I think they should be addressing it the same as they address all their other, you know, training tools or sure. uh, routines. Yeah. Tell me what it's like having BTC as such a big supporter of you. I mean, BTC is a great fight organization. They've got regularly scheduled cards. They're always really well organized, lots of fans. Everything works out really well. And they, of course, love Adam Asens and they have you on often. What's it like knowing you have that kind of support as a fighter who, you know, you rely upon people using you as, for your skills? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, you know, Sherry Crothers, uh, James Woodrow, Irene Starr, what they do for this area when there was no MMA at all, nobody mm. wanted to put on shows, nobody wanted to, you know, take the financial risk and stuff. What they've done has been amazing. And I've just been lucky that I've been a part of it because it was in my area. And, you know, I've grown mm. a following over the years, you know, fighting for all the organizations prior to BTC that I fought for in this area. So it's nice. I can get a good crowd out. And, you know, we can kind of keep this thing going every time I'm, I'm getting ready to scrap. Yeah. And what I've noticed with some other fighters and some other promotions is that they're very restrictive of their fighters and what they can and can't do. So I was, I don't know if I should say that I was surprised, but I was pleased to see that when you fought an LFA, that the whole BTC team was there to support you. They were happy for you and they were encouraging of you. That was, must have felt good as well. Yeah, they're amazing. They're, they're phenomenal what they do and they just want the sport of MMA to grow, so. Okay, so this weekend is fast approaching. Could you just quickly take us through what the final stages of, of fight week look like? I mean, when does weight cutting start? Like, how heavy are you before the weight cut? How long does it take? And typically, you know, tell me whatever you want to tell me. Sure. I mean, there's not much. Nothing changes, really. I just hang out, do what I need to do from a day-to-day -day basis. And usually that's work and, and, you know, take care of a few things. 
And I typically try to walk around super light the whole camp. So the weight cut's not, you know, too difficult. So, you know, mm -hmm. day before type of thing, weight cut starts. Like, obviously, I'm drinking water and water loading now, doing all the uh, all the proper things that you need to do to prepare. But, you know, start cutting the weight, you know, day before. And then, you know, morning of, make weight and then eat some good food and then get ready to smash. Yeah, for sure. This wouldn't be a very uh, good interview if I didn't ask you the question about uh, what it's on everybody else's minds right now was this past weekend, UFC 289, six Canadians, well, five Canadians plus one, Diana Belbitsa, all fought and they all won their fights. What were you thinking when you watched this? Oh, I was amazed. I was super happy. That's what we need in Canada. I'm happy they were able to do it for, for all of us Canadians. And, you know, at the end of the day, we need more MMA back to Canada, back to Ontario, back to you know, Vancouver, all these spots. So hopefully the UFC will get a little busier with coming out here. And uh, it was just nice to see, you know, most of my teammates represent most of most of the Canadians that won are my teammates. So it's just great to see yeah. them, you know, do so well and, and represent and, you know, remind the UFC, you know, what they're missing out here. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess let, let's move on now to training. This is just a, a little brief aside. You're one of the... Uh, recipients of a really beneficial training environment in southwestern Ontario where it seems like there's a whole bunch of you guys you spend time you do a little bit of traveling around you train at BTC you train at Aegis you train at Niagara top team and you guys all sort of share the best parts of of your 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 fight teams what's it like knowing as as well I mean keep going back to the fact that you've got so much support to be a professional fighter I mean you have a really great environment in this area what's that like having that great group of training partners to be to train with Oh, it's amazing. I can't, I can't, I, I literally can't portray how great it is. Cause I've been a part of it when there was no training partners, when we kind of had to travel really far for maybe a mm -hmm. couple of guys or a couple, couple different looks, or, you know, maybe some of the teams were kind of spread apart and, you know, I'm a part of it now where, you know, we all get together often throughout the week and you're able to, you know, get, get so many different looks, so many bodies, and it's just beneficial in general, right? We kind of have our own, it's basically Ontario versus the world, right? At the end of the yeah. day. So it's nice to kind of get all the looks that you need throughout the week, right? Fantastic. Okay, Adam, I think that's all the questions I have. I'm just going to see if you uh, want to mention anybody, if you want to thank any sponsors, thank any fans, any family, friends, anything like that. I just want to thank all my coaches, all my training partners. Um, shout out to BTC Fight. Um, you know, if you guys are looking to get in shape and you're too far away to get close to me, then you can jump on my app. Um, MPC Fitness, MPC Space Fitness in the App Store. And uh, that's it, man. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Awesome, Adam. Well, thank you so much. I, I always appreciate from fighters take the time, uh, especially someone like you who's in the main event, take the time to speak to me. Fight week. I know you have so much going on. It's probably exhausting. So it's truly appreciated. And I'm sure the fans who are watching this are also appreciative. So thank you very much. Good luck this weekend. Kick some butt. Thank you, brother. Have a great day. You too.